With Modern Warfare 3's campaign serving as a direct sequel to Infinity Ward's Modern Warfare 2 story, the Sledgehammer team is looking to build off the no Russian cliffhanger as we are on the hunt for Makarov. Unfortunately, the hype quickly dies once you get into the new content, as it kind of feels more like a Warzone DLC than a full-fledged campaign. This video is going to be short, as it marks one of my least favorite titles in the Call of Duty franchise. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and let's get into it. When loading up your guns and hopping headfirst out of an airplane, Modern Warfare 3 marks the first time that the majority of the missions are open world. Not even one of the biggest publishers out there can resist taking a formula that worked great and changing it up for the sake of donning it an open world title. I by no means am saying I dislike open world games. Some of my favorite titles are done wonderfully within that format, but in Modern Warfare 3's case, it leaves the levels feeling empty, boring, and kinda lazy. All of the open missions consist of hoofing it to three or four objectives to disable bombs, blow up helicopters, or steal intel. It becomes evidently clear after the first hour of gameplay that this campaign is everything you don't want in a Call of Duty story. There's little to no major set pieces, you never feel like your back is against the wall, and the ending of each open mission feels anticlimactic. I would have been more happy with the open mission concept if it built up to something by the end of the missions, but instead, it's simply over once you complete your grocery list of objective items. Outside of the mission designs, the open map layouts feel awfully familiar with many assets from Warzone being present within the level design. I understand that assets are recycled frequently for developers, but when the Call of Duty campaign standard is so high, the reused content sticks out like a sore thumb. The unfortunate aspect of the Warzone field doesn't stop there as you have weapon caches, armor plates, and specialty weapons littered throughout each level similar to their Battle Royale multiplayer. I did enjoy the fact that finding these caches meant you can customize your loadout for those particular weapons but you never had many opportunities to mix it up because of how spread out and easy the enemies felt. As a result of this, I never really went out of my way to find the orange boxes unless I stumbled upon them heading to one of the objectives. I wouldn't have minded the open missions as much if they weren't so frequent throughout the campaign. The magic of a Call of Duty campaign is the semi-linear level design that has story, character development, mini cutscenes, and tension you can cut with a knife. These straightforward styled missions felt few and far between in the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. When they did show their head, I really enjoyed it, but it results in a frustrating experience when you get slapped with an open mission right after. As for the story, it felt like another pain point because of these open missions. Since there was significantly less content and drama being built within the missions, the story felt clunky, sporadic, shallow, and a bit confusing. The main focus around the story is hunting down Makarov, which on paper, sounds great. However, one of the greatest villains in gaming didn't have the impact and fear that I think he deserved. There were still some cutscenes between each mission, but too often it was just talking heads discussing what the next move is in a different city. Outside of one scene taking place a mile in the sky, I didn't experience any moments that put my jaw on the floor or had me dying to know what's next. Each mission wrapped up with the feeling of, okay, now what? Like we were running errands for the CIA. And then you have the ending. I won't spoil any details, but the climax fell woefully flat because of the lack of story development throughout the entire campaign. When you add the fact that the entire campaign only took four hours to beat, you're left scratching your head about what you paid $70 for. Yes, I know Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer is included in that price tag, but an NFL primetime game lasting longer than this campaign felt like a giant slap in the face. I think the part that gets me upset with myself is what goes down in the end credit scene. No spoilers again, but seeing the direction that the Modern Warfare 4 campaign will go does have me excited to see how they approach the future title. It's kind of annoying because just when I was ready to be done with COD campaigns, they bring me right back in. Due to the cliffhanger at the end of the credits, it leaves the Modern Warfare 3 campaign feeling more like a DLC title instead of a full-fledged story that we're used to. They could have easily used that cutscene as a midpoint to the campaign and really amped up the stakes to round out the story. Instead, it's time to wait another year in hopes the payoff is actually going to be worth it. 
I'm by no means saying you should buy the campaign just for the end credits, because that would be silly. However, it would be worth checking out a video or article online to see what Modern Warfare 3 sets up for next year's title. Call of Duty has always had amazing gunplay, superb audio, jaw-dropping graphics, and great character models. Those staple features don't waver in Modern Warfare 3 and continue to push the capabilities of how games can look and feel. However, the choice to go with an open mission concept felt like they gutted the essence of what make the Call of Duty campaigns great. With minimal set pieces, a clunky story, minimal payoff at the end, and questionable mission design, even amazing gameplay can't make you look past these flaws. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's campaign gets shot in both legs as it limps to the medic tent with a 5 out of 10. And that's a wrap on the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Was the open mission concept and story structure as lackluster for you? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and tap that like button as it helps spread the love on the video. To stay up to date on future reviews, including the Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer, go ahead and tap that subscribe button. This is Josh Robinson with Joystick Gamer. Thank you as always for watching, and stay gaming out there.